What's up, guys? It's Saturday, March 21st. This would be our number 25 or so starting for March Madness of the tournament. We don't have it. It's a shame because of Corona, but the trifecta lives on. So I thought let's talk about some three great games that I remember, which makes me the reason why I love the tournament. Number one on the trifecta. Let's take a low memory down. Let's go down memory lane, shall we? Number one, 98-99 season. North Carolina is the three seed playing Weber State, the 14 seed in the first round. If you guys are diehards like me, this might have been one of the games that got me to truly love this tournament and everything it stands for. Harold Arsenault. You guys know him from Weber State. I think they were leading North Carolina by as much as 10 points late in that game. North Carolina chips away to cuts it to one, but it was too much Arsenault that entire game. Harold Arsenault became a household name. People still remember him and come up every year with the tournament. I think he had 36 points. He was a machine. He was unstoppable. I think North Carolina had a guy by the name of Ed Coda. So they were still good. They were a three seed, not a one or a two, but they were top. Huge upset. Weber State makes its tournament, makes its university, makes its one shining moment basketball dream. But Harold Arsenault, that guy was a monster. Brackets busted worldwide. Unbelievable game. Fans around, young fans, old fans, truly start loving the tournament from the man, the myth, the legend, Harold Arsenault. Look him up. Go on YouTube. Check out the history of that game. Remarkable performance. Number two of the trifecta, another game that I loved or didn't love, but enjoyed watching till the ending and would have screw ended up screwing me on all my pools. I was looking three for three in the final four until this Elite Eight game. I believe it was 2005-2006 tournament. Illinois was the number one team in the country. They had Dar Darren Williams, Luther Head, D. Brown, that three-headed monster, the number one seed in the region in the Elite Eight, going up against, you know, if you remember, if you're diehards, I know some of you were high on this team too. I remember talking to you, Scott Robbins, if you're listening, you agreed with me on this one. Arizona was a championship team that year. A guy by the name of not Damon Stottlemyre, Celine Stottlemyre and Channing Fry. That was a dominant, entertaining team. It was nasty, man. That was crazy. I think Arizona was up by 12 points, maybe 15 points with like four minutes left. And I'm like, this is in the bag. And then all of a sudden, I can remember Luther Head hits a three, cuts it to 11 or 12. And I'm just like, oh man, here it comes. The waves are turning, the momentum. And over that three to four minutes, it felt like an eternity. Arizona could do nothing right. Arizona has Channing Fry. Channing Fry's in the NBA. Great shooter, great player. Salim Stoudemire, potential college player of the year. They can't close the deal. Darren Williams goes off. Luther Head goes off. Everything went right for Illinois. Everything goes wrong for Arizona. Arizona ends up losing by one point at the end. What an entertaining game. Those last four minutes. But brackets busted again. Maybe not. For me, it was. I would have won plenty of tournaments, I think, my pools that year. But that was an amazing game. Arizona didn't have enough juice. The third leg of the trifecta. Some of you guys might remember this. We go back a little further. When I was in high school, I think it was 1996 tournament. Pete Carell, Princeton, the number 13 seed, going up against number four UCLA. 95's UCLA team won the championship. The O'Bannon brothers, Toby Bailey was coming up. They had, I think, what, Tyus Edney might have been his name as their point guard. 96, they still had Toby Bailey. They had one of the O'Bannon brothers. I can't remember if it was Charles or Ed. One of them. Big, big favorite. We all remember, if you're diehards like me, I keep saying, we love the tournament. The history of it is a beautiful thing. Pete Carell's offense, those backdoor screens, the backdoor picks, slow down. They try to even deviate from having a shot clock, just slow it down to a halt. Really difficult to watch that game, but if it's working and you're beating the big giants, it's entertaining. The final score of that game was 46 to 43. I can remember, I think they were... And with a couple seconds left, they pulled it off again. They just had no answer. Bad coaching to stop the backdoor screens, backdoor picks. No answer for that. And another basket scores by Princeton. Toby Bailey can't hit the shot at the end of the game to force overtime or tie it. I can't remember. I can just picture him leaving his hands, and that's it. Huge upset. Pete Carell deserved it. Princeton does it. It's remarkable. 